I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we're doing equipment autopsies on this. We have a Speedstream um, DSL modem and these are pretty ubiquitous. You see them all over the place. And we had one to Junk Pile. I was like, hey, we gotta take one of these apart. It's really dumb and boring, but it'll be cool. A lot of people have these and they don't get to see inside them. So let's take a look. We've got, here's the bottom. And hey, just because everybody wants to know, there's, there's all my info with the MAC address and everything. This, this one, I have no idea where it came from. So feel free to steal that MAC address and use it for spoofing or whatever you want. I don't care. Whatever works for you. So let's open it up. One screw in the bottom. This is like the lowest common denominator of manufacturing, I'm sure. There's one screw, maybe, oh, no, I think we've got a second screw. If you look, right there, a little dent. Ah, secret screw spot. So just stab right through it. Carve it out a bit. Ah, there you go. I have no love for this because I hate the uh, phone company with a pretty serious passion. Because DSL is a horrible way to connect to the internet. I'm a huge fan of Charter. Is there a kind of a polite way to do this? No. I don't want to just rip it. I want to do something, you know, professional. But that's not going to happen. There we go. Yeah, I need that. We got a back cover. Oh, hey, is that actually metal? That's actually made of metal. Shut up! I'm surprised. There's an actual. It's it's metal. It's like what, stamped a little. What is this for? In substance, I see it's, before. <laughs> shut up! It's metal. I'm impressed. The whole thing's plastic, except for this one back plate. That's a rather serious piece of wood. Cool. All right. Now inside we've got this, which is the giant secret chip box. We're hacking that off. Fuse, actual replaceable bus type fuse, which is, how big are you? That's great, it's 250 volts all over the place, but it won't tell me the amperage. It's an actual bus brand fuse. Can I see it? Yeah, totally does not tell me it's amperage rating, which is weird. What kind of fuse doesn't have the amp rating on it? Bus, and like, Half a dozen little happy symbols. There's a heart there and a circle and a backwards RU and a V. And at no point, not even on either end, does it give me the amperage rating of the fuse. This is the dumbest fuse in history. Let's check the other end. One amp, T1A. So it's a one amp fuse. It's that was hard. It was a pain to get that off there. Are you mocking me? Huh? You mock that's like a useful skill. It's the most important thing you'll ever learn in college is how to snap a bottle cap. Everybody Stop needs it. To you, if I, you're lucky you don't have any pennies. Oh, man, if I, I'm like death with a nickel. Yeah, all I got is quarters. and <laughs> You're not worth it. Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> all right, let's look at the board and see what we got. We've got down here power connector, on-off switch. I think that was the on-off switch. Wild. But really, what other switch would you have on here? Um, Ethernet port and then the phone port. We look on the board and we've got a couple, what are you? 102K, two kilovolts. That's really, that, there's no way that's rated for two kilovolts. That's gotta be, those gotta be capacitors. Yeah, those are caps. We've got the fuse. Um, we've got a wind bond chip here which we can identify as a 222 Delta Gamma wind bomb chip. We got this great big thing in the middle. I don't know what that is. That's got me curious. Um, over here we've got a, these, you'll see these a lot. Little metal can. Now the heights on them will vary. Um, the biggest you typically see them is about this high. About, it actually very closely resembles a chiclet candy. But uh, this is a, usually as big as you'll see them, but you'll see them a lot shorter. Sometimes you'll see these where they're only like uh, maybe an eighth inch tall. This, with the, the oval metal canister, is a crystal. They're used as, it's a, inside it's a quartz crystal, and they vibrate at a very, very repeatable frequency that's often up in like the megahertz. Um, you'll see these a lot in like really old CBs. Um, some model radio controlled airplanes and stuff like that will have them. They'll, you'll be able to change out the frequency that you operate at. Um, but it's, it's a frequency standard. Now here, remember I was mentioning short ones. Here's the tall one, 
I'll turn it up on edge. You can see it's, you know, it's about a half inch tall. Over here is another one that's much shorter. It's only about an eighth inch high. So, so they, they do come in a bunch of different sizes. They're kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you can do a lot. Of, if you desoldered these off here, you can use them for oscillator stuff and radio stuff, things like that. Um, we've got, what are you? That's really big. I'm going to say that's a capacitor. Let me see if I can show you. See that? I thought it was a relay at first, but you can see the number on there is 0 .033. So it's a relay number. It's probably a capacitor. And if you look on the bottom of it right here, there's only two connectors. So it's probably a capacitor. Um, these big can things that you'll see all over the place. These are really common on electronics. These are all capacitors. Here's some big ones, um, probably used for filtering or something like that. We got a coil here. Now, the way to tell if it's a transformer or a coil is look at the bottom. There's only two electrical connections, so it's only one coil of wire, which tells us that is an inductor. It's not a transformer. If there were four pins or even at least three at the bottom, it could be a transformer of some sort, but it's just two. So that's just an inductor. It's got a bit of heat shrink around it, and that's probably a filter. Um, not a lot really on this, so they're pretty boring. I'm going to see if I can pry that off and get a look inside, because I really am curious. We'll try the pokey thing first. Uh, usually, when you see metal cans like that, they are, uh, where are you? They're, uh, RF shielding for some reason or other, and given that this hooks into the phone lines, that's not surprising at all. A lot of things dealing with telephone technology or computer technology work in the radio frequency ranges, and you can get a lot of interference. So they require that uh, at part 15 of FCC rules, which pretty much everything that plugs in a wall has to be certified to these days. Um, requires that a lot of stuff meet certain guidelines as to how much interference it'll broadcast unintentionally. And they have to not only limit how much they broadcast, but they have to um, be tolerant of anything. So it's like, we can't broadcast anything, but we'll accept any crap you throw our way. And that's, that's the very simple version of part 15 of the FCC rules. Now, we, here's the chip. It's hidden under there. It's a big Verata chip, a Helium 210. I have no idea what that is, but, oh, oh, hang on. See that right there? ARM. That tells me this is a little computer chip. It's probably a ARM processor. Um, it's, a, it's a processor chip similar to like, uh, well, this most closely would be related to like a VIA processor on like a really tiny computer. Um, this widget, this board, is probably a very simple computer that runs some flavor of embedded Linux or another embedded software system. But yeah, a, a lot of things are like that. Like, you'd be amazed how many VCRs and microwaves and DVD players and things like that actually run a very tight, compact version of embedded Linux. So that's, that's pretty much all you can really learn off one of these. There's not a lot to it. There's, oh, this is neat. Check this out. You don't see these very often. I'll share this with you guys. I just, I like, I like taking stuff apart like this and sharing it with you guys. And wow, I just ripped that one completely apart. All right, I'm going to see if I can get one off intact. But here's, there's the baby version. That's, that's the inside, little inductor. These are in a big case. And if I can get one off whole, they look really cool. Ah! All right, well, normally that would be down inside that. So here, I'll show you how it's supposed to look before I totally pooched it. All right, there. See? No? Isn't that neat? It's just cute. Little tiny thing, it's about as big as my fingernail, see? But it's cute, it's this little hair thin, that's gotta be like maybe 30 gauge or smaller. Bare copper magnet wire on a little ferrite core. The, uh, the cores that a lot of inductors are wound on are made out of ferrite. It's basically a powdered iron that they center into shape. They like press it and center it into shape. What, what's with the face? This is <laughs> neat, we're talking about some neat stuff here. I know you don't care, but you know, there's people that do. Somewhere out there, there's a 12 year old kid who thinks no. oh, that's the coolest video ever. I was wondering though, what, I wasn't making fun of the kid, I'm making what? fun of you. Um, oh, well, that's all right then. What is the point of ferrite core on like uh, the ends of a cord or something just to prevent interference? Yeah, it's like, uh, like, oh man, do we have a cord with a ferrite no. bead on it? Um, you'll see ferrite beads, they clip on 
on chords and that a lot and what it does is it suppresses high frequency transients like usually that'll be like on a power chord yeah. um, where the frequency the mains power going in and out is always 60 hertz in, in America some parts of the world it's 50 but it's really low frequency mm -hmm. so they'll put a ferrite bead on there and that stops all the high frequency trash the noise coming down okay. the power line so yeah you'll see them a lot um, ferrite beads are used for it's a it's a low pass filter is the best way to for, for okay. a video guy that makes mm -hmm. sense to you it's a low pass filter basically so yeah that's our look at I totally I threw it all away oh so that's our look at the inside of your DSL modem standard speed stream model like used in the United States you guys have fun I'm Chris Bowden with the geek group we'll see you next time This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.